So Milanote can be deceptive. You remember last time we talked about this? I did that big masterclass on sort of the basics of Milanote, and look, I'll put the link in the description, and I don't know what. I mean, at some point, I need to figure out where to put the thumbnail in this shot so you can remember what it looks like, and I can do it in a place where it actually sort of makes sense and makes this whole thing look better, and... Okay, yeah, okay, that was funny. So anyway, what I want to do today is I want to be able to sort of go beyond the basics because that's the problem with the tour. You can do anything is in my experience. Most of the time you don't do anything because there's so many different possibilities. Well, now today what I want to do is I want to show you a lot of the tips, a lot of the tricks, a lot of the things that I've learned in using this program a lot. Some of them maybe you've never seen. Some of them aren't documented. Some of them are just they're all things that are going to make you faster. They're going to make you better. They're going to make you more creative. So stick around because I guarantee you're going to find out some stuff you definitely probably didn't know before. Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Crazy One. As always, I'm your host, Steve Gates, and this is the YouTube channel and podcast that helps you become a better leader, helps you be more creative, do more with your career, and in this case, learn some cool stuff about some applications you probably didn't know. Now, as always, if you like content like this and you want to be able to get more of it, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell so that YouTube will let you know whenever new videos come out. Now, today we're going to talk about Milanote, and one of the things you're going to notice about this video, and it's actually in all the videos that I do, is if you look down in the timeline, there are going to be four different chapters, and we're going to do that because we're going to cover a lot of different ground. You're probably going to come back and use this video as a reference, so whenever you do it, it's going to make it easier for you to jump right into where it is you want to go. But the four things we're going to cover today are first, how just what are some of the neat tips and tricks for around creating notes? There's a bunch of things that are going to make you work a little bit faster, do some things you maybe didn't know, so we're going to start with that. Then we're gonna go into how do you navigate around a Milanote. You can have a lot of notes, a lot of boards. It can be sort of hard to figure out where things are. So we're gonna talk about some tips and tricks around that. Then we're gonna talk about working with notes. So there's a lot of features and there's actually probably a lot that you can capture and put in there that you don't know about. So we're gonna spend a good chunk of time walking through what all those different variations are. And then finally, we're gonna wrap up with two hidden features. And these are gonna be two things that I think are really, really effective, but a lot of people don't know about so we're gonna cover all four of those parts. Now, what I'm gonna be able to do with this is that I wanna get into just doing the whole thing and showing it all to you inside of Milanote. So we're just gonna have one big board, navigate around that, but the chapters will help you jump around and get to where it is you wanna go. Enough talking. Let's jump in and let's start looking at some of this stuff. So here we are inside of Milanote. And so that's what the application is that you see here. Now, this is the desktop application. Now, like I said before, for those of you who haven't done it, this was the original one that I did. So this how to get started with Milanote, this YouTube, I would tell you to go check that out because that's going to be the basics of how to work with it and do some of those sort of things. So for this one, we're just going to go ahead and assume that you've watched that so you understand the basics of how to work with the application. Now, before I get started, I think there's just there's a few important little wrinkles that I want to be able to talk about. The first one is what version are we on? So I'm using version 2.2.5 on the pro plan. Now the version is important because again, they roll out new features, things are gonna change, stuff is gonna be different, but that's the version that you're gonna wanna be able to know and the pro plan is going to make a little bit of a difference. And now, just to be clear, because this is something that you should think about or ask when you watch these videos, no, they are not paying me anything. I pay for the pro plan on myself, so this is not some influenced review or video or anything like that. So, but again, it's version 225 on the pro plan, just so you can check it against what you do. If you ever aren't sure, just go up to Milanote, about Milanote, and it'll tell you the version right there. So that way you know, because again, these videos age, things change, but this is the version I'm recording this on. Now, let's just talk about the plans real quickly. And there's just, there's a few different little differences here. So the free plan is this one up here, the pro plans down below. The big difference is the free one's gonna limit you to just 100 cards, the pro plans are gonna give you unlimited cards. The files basically are just, you're only gonna be able to do 10 files on free, you can do unlimited on pro. The size of the images is gonna change a little bit, so it goes from 10 megs up to 100, and then other files go from 50 megs to five gigs. Now again, that's not gonna make any influence for what we're gonna change and what we're gonna go through today, but just in case you're wondering what's the difference between the free and the pro plans, it's just things like the number of cards, the how many files you can hold, and file size. That's gonna be the only real difference. Now, the other thing to call out is that there is this Milanote Help Center. 
And so whenever you come here, it's this web page that they've got. And now the reality is, is that it's, I mean, if we're being honest, it's okay. I, I've gone through this. I've looked through it a bunch of different times. There are, there are things that are on here from how to get started, how to optimize your work. The challenge is, and look, I get it. There's a bunch of information in here that just isn't right. And it's either outdated or if you do it, it actually does a different kind of functionality. And again, I think that's just simply a reflection of the fact that like, look, I'm sure this is a small team. They're in there working on other documentation. So this isn't what they're focused on. But let's get into this. So let's jump in and let's get into this first section around creating notes. Okay, so now let's get into how to create notes. And just so we're clear, this is a note, right? This little box right here, this thing that you can start to type in, that's a note. Now, one of the first ones is to be able to create a shortcut to what we just looked at, because there's that, okay, I can take this and I can sort of drag it out. Well, instead of doing that, if you just double click, it'll create one, and then you can start to type whatever it is you want there. Now, that's an easy one, but okay, so let's double click and let's create another one. Okay, but even that was a pain, because why did I have to do that again? So whenever I get to the end of doing one of these notes, and so I'm doing this on a Mac, so again, you can translate it for the keys if you're doing it on a PC, but if you get to the end, if you just hit Command Return, it'll create a new note. So that way it just gives you a real simple ability that if I want to keep typing and doing things like this, it makes it much easier to just keep going, to be able to do stuff like that. So again, it's a simple little thing, but it can make a big difference. Now, another part is that some people don't know that you can actually layer notes, because you can see there's a, there's a Z depth here, because if you look, these are actually overlapping each other. Now, if you wanna be able to do that, if you right click, what you can see is it right there, bring to front or send to back. So if at some point you wanna layer these, if you wanna be able to go through and to be able to kind of say, okay, look, we're doing a group sort or we're doing a stack or we're doing something like that, you can actually stack them on top of each other. And whenever you do that, there's a Z depth there that will help you to be able to kind of work through what that is. Now, the other thing that you can do with this is that sometimes whenever I'm going through, I'm building a mood board, I'm building an inspiration board or something like that, I know I want some images, but maybe I haven't found them yet. Maybe as the work comes in, I wanna indicate for people where they should go. Well, here again, you can be able to do that. So if you right click, and go down here, you'll see that hidden down here, once again, is this thing called new image placeholder. And whenever I click on that, it gives me this box. And what that is, is just what it says. This is the image placeholder. And I can take this, I can resize it, I can make it whatever the size is I think that I want. But that's the nice part, because then what this does is then this way I can go in and be able to load that in. So just by double clicking on it, I'll do it again. You can sort of see that then that's what'll happen. You can go through and pick, so I don't know what, I, just, I have this Webby Award thing here. Pick that, that'll then drop that in. I can resize it and be able to get it to be have the look that I want. But as you just noticed, that is the key part of this, is that it will keep the shape of what it is you created. So since I created this a little bit taller, that's not gonna work. So for the image that I know I wanna bring in, and this is the one bug that can be a bit of a pain in the butt, is that, so I need it to be a little bit more square. We'll see if I got it right that time. There's a little bit of trial and error that goes into this. Eh, closer but it's because once it's actually been brought in, you'll see it keeps the shape. The other thing that is nice that you can actually notice if you look here, is that if you bring a transparent PNG, it does understand the PNG and it keeps the transparency. So if you just wanna make it look a little bit nicer, or do those sort of things, transparent PNGs will hold up whenever they come in. Now, since we're on the subject of files, there is this upload files that's over here. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily know that you can add whole files. So if there's something you wanna add, and you can see there's a bunch of different ones and you can sort of notice there, that's for a PDF, that's a sketch file, that's for a Word doc. There are a bunch of these that you can actually upload. And that was why when we talked about in the basic versus the pro plan, the file size, is that if you want to use this as cloud storage, that's where this upload file works really well. So that that way, if there's a sketch file, there's a Word document, there's a PDF, there's something that everybody wants to work from or be able to refer to, that upload file can work really well. Now the other thing, maybe you noticed it, maybe you didn't, is this. Whenever we came in here, there was actually this note. And if you notice it, that it's actually transparent. And that's another little trick for whenever you're doing some of these organizing, because whenever you make a new note, so again, double click there, so we'll say title of the note goes here, great. 
But the problem is it's now contained in this gray box. And if I click on it, well, like, okay, I can put a color at the top, but that doesn't really help it stand out. So what I wanna be able to do is to actually make it transparent. Now, this is one of the little UI things that gets a little bit funky because you would think that that would be under color. If I wanna make it transparent, I come into custom color somewhere, that's not where it is. The trick on this one is that it's here in power ups. And so in power ups, what you can do in, and you can see there's a few different things. You can convert it to long form, which means if I have a lot of content, I can put it in there. I can add a description which if I do that, just adds a secondary little sort of piece underneath it. I don't wanna do that for this. And then as we get down to the bottom, you'll notice, ta-da, there is make it transparent. Where if you wanna be able to do that, you can turn that on. And now all of a sudden you can see that if I wanna create headers, I wanna create different things like that. Now that gives me the ability to do it where it's transparent. The other interesting thing that I'll say that I'd tell you to take advantage of, if you have any other ideas of what you wanna do here, whenever you go into power-ups, there's also the, this ability here where you can request one. They're really good about publishing their backlog and doing those sort of things. But that's just that's a sort of a neat little thing because again, whenever I have it up here and I've got this nice kind of area up here, I've got the YouTube video and I wanna have a header but I don't want it to look like a note. That's a really nice place to be able to use that transparent note to be able to get into that. So again, it's a simple thing but maybe it comes in a little bit more handy than what you'd think. Now, let's get into the next section of navigating. Okay, so for this section for navigating, we're gonna talk about four things about how do you just move through Milanote? Because that's the thing, as you notice here, this is the little board we're working inside that's nested inside of YouTube, that's nested inside of home. There's a lot of different areas and a lot of different ways to be able to do it. Now, one of the things that comes up a lot for me is that I'm in this note here, so I'm in the yellow one, and I wanna get up to the whole YouTube channel. Well, you can come up all the way up here to the top and we'll get into a minute why sometimes this gets a little bit hard and inconvenient or hard to do. But one of the tricks that you can do is if you hit shift, the command key, and in this case, up, what it'll do is it will take you one level up. And then if I keep holding that down and hit down, it'll take me back into that board. So if I just wanna jump up and I wanna kinda of zoom out here a little bit. So these are all my different things that I've got going on for YouTube. This is the one I'm looking at. I can't remember if this one's unique or not. That lets me be able to do it. And then again, I can jump back into the board. But here again, you see something interesting also just happened is that if I've changed and kind of zoomed out, it will hold whatever that level of zoom is through this whole thing. So sometimes it may get a little disorienting. You have to jump back and forth. But the other part of this is to know it basically only remembers one level. So in this case, as you can see, I'm down two levels. There's the Milanote, YouTube, and then home. So if I jump up twice, It'll take a second to load. Okay, great, now I'm all the way up on my home level. So if I do down, it goes back into YouTube. If I do down again, it doesn't do anything because it basically only has one level of memory. So it won't remember anything past that. So you can't jump more than one level with that shortcut, but it's an easy way if you just wanna be able to jump up without hitting that sort of back and forth to be able to do that. Another thing that comes up for me a lot, obviously I use the program a lot. I've got a lot of different notes. How the hell do you find anything? And so for me, there's this little simple shortcut of just Command F. And for the longest time, I don't know why, I never realized that this search was up here. It just sort of felt like it was kind of so far off to the side that it was just, it wasn't something that I really noticed very often. And so as a result, I just didn't really pay attention to it. But this can help a ton with what it is that you're doing because what that does is it really gives you the ability to find something. So if I wanna go in and look for Milanote, this is what it is that I can do. Now, most often what it's going to do is it's going to just go in and find boards. That is gonna be the one weakness to the search is that inside of this, it will say seven matches in this current board, one match inside of this board. So that in this case, whenever I kind of click on that, only then will it go through and flag what those are. So that again, now I'm gonna to need to scroll around in here and you can see there are these little sort of arrows that you can kind of see that are here on the side that will show me how many of them that there are. So it's good, but if I'm looking for something specific, then what you're gonna to need to be able to do is search for something specific. So then in this case, if I wanna go in and say, we'll talk about the this Milanote web clipper, then what I'm gonna to have to do is to try to be as specific as I can so then it can point out that specific instance inside of that specific board. But understand at this level, it's just gonna show you what board it's in. 
And then whenever you click on that, then it will go in and show you the note. But it will know what is not going to take you sort of directly to that. Again, like I said, I, I, it's a good solution, I think, for as sort of complicated as what this is. But it's just it's a little bit of a different search than sometimes what people are used to. Now, another interesting trick here is going to be that you actually can set the background color. Now, on this one in particular, some people have asked about this. Whenever you actually go into preference, this is a Mac thing. I don't know that you can do this on PCs yet. You can actually change the color scheme from light to dark. So if I change it to light, everything goes to white. I like the dark theme because it looks a little bit better. But also inside of that, you can change the color. And like I said, a lot of people didn't know you can do this. If you just right click, Whenever uh, you're just sort of out here, not on anything in particular, then all of a sudden, ta-da, change board background shows up. And we've got gray, we've got blue, we've got sort of a green, a red, reddish brown, and kind of a purple. I can change the dot grid on and off. I like the gray, but that's the thing. If you just want to be able to make them different colors, if you like to make them visually distinct so that you know sort of what section you're in, that can be a, a neat little way to be able to do that. Now, the other thing here is that you can, and I think you saw me do it a little bit before, you can zoom in and out of these boards. And you can do that one of two ways. So one is to be able to go in, and so here it says zoom in, and it says zoom out. The nice part about this is that it will tell you the key shortcuts here. Millinote team, if you are listening, what would be great is as we go through this, you will see that for a ton of these other ones, there is no way for me to be able to know to how to do these shortcuts, right? So it's a little bit too much like the hidden menu at In-N-Out Burger. It'd be nice if it was a little bit easier. So that's one way of being able to do it. The other way is just if you hit the minus or plus, it will let you zoom in and out. Now, the one problem about this, and remember whenever I said before about why I use that shortcut to change levels? is as I zoom all the way out, and you can see this whole board we're gonna cover, the problem is, and again, the one thing I really wish that they would fix, because it's a problem, is this Chrome, right? The UI around here scales with it. So as I zoom out, this scales back with it. So now, if I need to come in here and I wanna hit that home button, do you see how dangerously close it is? And again, how easy it is for me to be able to go into minimize or full screen or close with how close these start to get? Well, that's the problem, and that's why that shortcut is important, is because when you do this, I really wish these would stay the same size and just the work area would scale, because now it gets super hard to be able to work with this stuff, which is why you need to be able to do that. But then as an inverse, now whenever I zoom all the way in, they almost become a little bit comically oversized because they're a little bit too big. That's why I said, that's just for this version. I keep hoping in a future release that's gonna get addressed. But that's the reason why some of these shortcuts, especially this move in and out of boards, becomes important because here, again, these are far enough apart, there's not an issue there. But again, whenever I zoom all the way out and those collapse down, that starts to become a problem. Now, let's get into the cool stuff, the big stuff of actually working with notes. So now working with notes is gonna be a little bit different than creating notes because what that's gonna mean is that once we've created one, Ta-da! It's gonna be about some of the tips and tricks that you can use to be able to do some shortcuts because what it really gets to is this bar over here. Because now that I've actually created a note, all this stuff lights up. So headline, bold, italic, bulleted list, numbered list, hyperlink. Well, the, here again, there's a whole sort of secret language and you can see it spelled out here. And I have that on there just so if you wanna screenshot it or something like that, where you can do shortcuts to that. So if you wanna do headline, if you a hashtag and a space, Notice how it disappeared so that the hashtag is gone, but this lit up. That means that now whenever I write anything there, it's a headline. It's the same sort of thing where if I wanna do a bulleted list, if I do a dash and then do that, well, you can see what happened is the dash turned into a bullet and now the bulleted list is there. So as I do that, those show up. Just a simple way to be able to do that. The numbered list is, now we'll see, sometimes this gives me grief. You do a one, a period, and a space, Okay, this may or may not work. Okay, it did work this time. Sometimes in previous versions, sometimes I have to do the one twice, but in this case, that's working perfectly, which is great because we're recording the video, so that's a good thing to be able to see. Um, a quote, so you can do a quote on this, and to do a quote, you do a greater sign, hit the space, and so again, you, in this case, you can't really see it light up because it's down here, hidden. Here, let me see so you can see that. So you can see there's a quote, I can do a code snippet, a strike through or a highlight. 
So again, to be able to do a quote, and so I can do quote goes here, helps whenever you spell quote right. So now I have a quote that's in there. And so you can see, you can keep going through and doing all these different ones. So if I want to do a checklist to be able to do that, then it will automatically change that into a checklist. So again, that's a nice way to be able to do that a little bit faster. And bold is asterisk. So if I go through here and to be able to do that, and see, that's the thing. See, that's supposed to be bold and it's not actually taking, it's turning it into a bulleted list. So I think that's a good example of what I said, where I think the functionality on that has maybe has changed since the last release. But again, you can go through and play with these. There's enough of these that do work that that should be able to make it work for you. Now, the other thing is that a lot of people I think don't know, you can embed way more content into these notes than you probably imagine. And you saw that in the beginning. And so here's a few of them, right? So there's an example, and we'll come back, of like a YouTube video. So whenever you go in, it can actually play the YouTube video inside of Milanote. So that's cool. You can do um, actually Google Maps. And the maps are interactive. So that if we want to talk about a particular location, I can get in there and actually interact with those. So that's really nice. You can pull in Instagram content. So if you want some crazy picture of yourself with Aaron Draplin, you can be able to do that. But it's really simple and because this is a nice part of it. So for videos, you can do YouTube, video, TED Talks, anything like that. So create a note. And actually, let's flip over. I've got one of these already open. We'll go into here and go into YouTube. Let's copy that. So let's come back to Milanote. Whenever I paste that in and hit enter, you'll see it process. And then ding, there it is. So now I can actually play that from inside of here. That's a really nice one. You can do audio. So you can do audio from SoundCloud, Google from Google Maps that I showed you. You can do code snippets from CodePen. You can do images from Instagram, Dribble, or Flickr. So here again, let's do that example. Just do the square. Go back here. I've got Instagram open. There's a photo of me in Berlin on the rehearsal day with the guys from Metallica standing in the empty stadium in Berlin. I want to pull that in. I can add a caption in here. I can do that whole thing. It automatically just detects what that is. So that's really great. I can put whole presentations in here. SlideShare and Prezi are the two that I know of right now. I can do prototypes from Marvel and I can do spreadsheets from Airtable. But that's the thing is it gives you these really nice now interactive little modules that you can put in here so you can watch the video. You can have the map. Again, like you said, you can store the file. So it starts to become a really nice repository for a lot of that stuff. Now, one of the other things that some people have seen that they aren't sure how to replicate because it comes up in the templates but they aren't sure how to do it, is how do you make a color swatch? Which is a really good question. Because again, if you're designing something, that comes in really handy. All you'd need to be able to do is just to take the hex value. So in this case, I already have one loaded in here. Take the hex value, drop it in there, hit return, and then it, it will immediately show you the color. So now again, if I want to be able to do color swatches, that's a really easy way to be able to do it so that I can have a bunch of these that are in there and be able to have my whole color palette. Cool. Now lines, lines is another one. So if you want to be able to show organization, you want to be able to show there's this thing, then there's this thing, then there's this thing, and that there's an order to this, you can actually create lines. So again, if you just go in, select all of them, right click, and then right there, connect with lines. Now, whenever I hit that, what you're gonna see is that, okay, great, it dropped these lines in here. But also over here, start and stop. So at the end of all these, whenever I hit that and I pick this, now I can show directionality. I can change the color. So let's make this so it's a little bit more readable. Great. So now I've got this from this to this. Okay. And so we'll just make it a little bit more show off. So that to the green. And then the end, we want to be done. We'll make that purple. So, okay, cool. Now I've got something that stands out a little bit. But you can also do things that are a little bit more advanced. And maybe you saw that over here, was we have this nice little sort of curved part. So that, because again, not everything is straight. And there's an easy way to be able to do that. So let's get rid of these. Ah, deleted too much. Let's just pick the line and let's get rid of that. And you know what? Let's go back to the beginning. So we have three boards that are here, just numbered one, two, and three. Easy enough. Do the exact same thing, pick them be able to do connect with lines and let's stick an arrow at the end of them. And just to make them a little bit easier for you to see, let's make them white. Okay, now the thing to be able to notice is that here there's this dot that's right here in the center. You can see whenever I roll over it, 
that now all of a sudden it turns into that two-way arrow. And what happens is whenever I grab that, I can start to bend this line to be able to make it. So if I wanna be able to show this, that these actually make it look a little bit nicer, be able to pull that up there, great. Also, if I move one of these, you'll see that the arrow will go with it. So if I want to show this is more of a cycle, cool, I can do that. But that way, is, again, it's just a simple way to be able to do it. They're nice, they're reactive at any point. Again, you can go back in, decide where on that curve you want it to be to be able to make them the same. But it's just, it's a nice, easy way to be able to sort of join that stuff together to be able to do that. And it lets you be able to just kind of create those nice, simple curved lines. So cool for that. Now let's get into, it's down here, forgot where I was, these two hidden features and let's wrap up with that. So let's wrap up with hidden features, hidden features, hidden features. So there are two things in here that, I, again, I think a lot of people don't know you could do. One of these, actually, I didn't even know you could do until, thankfully, one of the viewers had commented on it and made me aware of it inside the notes on the last video. The first one is that you can actually create your own templates. And for those who don't know, if I create a new board, so new board, new, uh, whenever I go into it, you'll see that there is this, this sort of thing that shows up here of all these different templates for me to be able to choose from. That's great. Well, what if there's one that I always wanna use all the time? In my case, there actually is. So whenever I do my podcast, this, let me zoom out, I use this as the starting point for it. So that ability to do any reference, the intro, the setup, the final thought, and the wrap up are always the same, so no need to be able to do that. Go in, grab these, it's the same every single time. Well, I was like, man, I really wish whenever I sort of started a new show that I'd be able to grab that and pull that in. Well, you actually can. So here again, if you right click on this, you can see that it will say convert to template. And what happens is if I do that, you'll now see underneath it says template and it's called show template. So if I go back in here, do a board, new once again. Now, whenever I go in, the thing that you can see is that whenever we go into more templates, show, you can see that now show template shows up. So whenever I click on that, ta-da, there's the template that I had that I wanted all the time so that this way I can make my own custom templates whenever I do that. So it's just, it's such a simple and easy way to be able to do it. So if there are things and ways that you like to be able to set up for a brainstorm or a show or different ways of working, great, you can be able to go in and do that. Now, the other part of this is, is that sometimes maybe you want to reference this board from someplace else meaning maybe there's a big dashboard. Maybe our project has gotten really complicated. Well, I don't wanna create multiple versions of this because then those get out of sync, but I want people to be able to find it or I wanna be able to reference it. So another thing you can do in here that I think is sort of nice is that whenever you can do is you can actually create a shortcut to this board. So in that case, what I can do is in the same way, like you can do this on most of your like desktop applications and things like that. So if I just want a reference to it, and again, you can see that just with that little arrow, this is now the shortcut, that gives me the ability to create a shortcut that will reference this original board. So if I put it someplace else, it'll reference back to where this board is, keeping this one where it should be so that again, I don't come into some big complicated sort of thing. But Hopefully this has helped. Like I said, these are a bunch of these little tips and tricks and there are things like that. Actually, no, oh, there's one last little hidden thing, which is the other part whenever you're creating a lot of this content is you may want to grab their web clipper. And so this is, and it's, it's an extension that they have that's for Chrome and Safari. And whenever you install this, if you want to be able to pull content in, whenever you do that, and you can see it here where you can actually go in and you can pick which board do you wanna be able to save it to? And so it will take this little snippet, it'll take this article, whatever that is, and automatically pull it into Millinote for you. So if you don't wanna go out like what we were doing here and grab the Instagram, if you don't wanna go here and grab the YouTube video, it's an easy way to be able to do that. Again, I'll put the link down below or you can just go to millinote.com. But like I said, these are sort of a bunch of the different tips and tricks and different things all sort of, again, just housed in this one board that will hopefully make you a little bit faster, do things a little bit different. Like I said, I, I hope that then the documentation and the, the tips and tricks around this either gets baked into the app, which I think would be ideal, hint, hint, folks at Millinote, or again, that you they can update the documentation. But I think obviously, since we're all working in here, fixing that and fixing this would certainly go a hell of a long way. I tried to warn you, whatever we got started, I told you we were gonna cover a lot of ground, there's gonna be a lot in there, so remember, that's why the chapter markers are in there. So if you want to use this as a reference, come back, 
you can jump right in, go back, say, hey, what was it that we did again? And be able to make sure that you can do it for yourself. But the other thing is, look, maybe there's some questions you have. Maybe there's a, there's a trick that you have that wasn't as a part of this. Maybe you just want to be able to leave a general comment. But whenever you do that, jump down into the comments. I love them in there all the time. I'm happy to respond to things. But let me know, what are your thoughts? What are other things we're doing? Maybe you'll lead to more videos. If nothing else, it usually just leads to a good discussion. But also remember, if you like this content, if you want to get more like it, hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell so you let YouTube let you know whenever I release more content like this. Hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully you get a little more creative. And again, we'll do more of these in the future. But always, and until then, stay crazy.